Let me share an example from my personal life. I am married to a German husband. I repeat that for you. <laughs> I am married to a German mathematician engineer who worked in finance and IT and lately decided to retire. Welcome to my personal pandemic hell at home. <laughs> in his life, everything has to be sorted and organized in a very particular way. The accent that you have to handle the next 40 minutes should tell you there is a Spanish grandmother, an Italian grandfather, a French father, and an Austrian mother. So as long as I have wine and cheese in my refrigerator, my life is just okay. <laughs> However, I happen to be that wife that goes to the refrigerator, takes out, let's say, a bottle of sparkling water, drinks some sparkling water, puts it back in, and doesn't put the cap on as appropriate as my German husband would expect me to. Might be that I leave it a little bit open. He finds everything, everything in our home that I leave open. And every time it turns into an argument. But he never sees the thing that are close. And I do close things. It's a variety of biases working against me. His brain goes on a journey. And on that journey, he only sees the things that he would like to see. And the same is true for your clients. When they interact with you, you can give them dozens, dozens of yeses. Why they should work with you, why they should sell with you, why they should buy with you. But if they want to find a no, they are going to find it somewhere. We like to think that our clients make decisions like this guy rational, logical, based on data, facts, and figures. But the reality is, your clients make decisions like this guy. <laughs> Heavily biased, emotional, trusting their gut feeling more than the data, facts, and figures that you provided them with. And why is that the case? Because their brain is overwhelmed. Every single second, the human brain transmits 11 million bits of information. Take that number in. Every single second, 11 million bits of information. And because your brain tries to save energy, only 40 of those 11 million bits of information are transmitted in your conscious part of the brain, which is about 5%. This is where data, facts, and figures get transmitted. This is where your market knowledge comes in. But what happens in the other 95% in their subconscious mind, where the rest of the 11 million bits of information get transmitted? This is where their emotions are, their gut feelings, their unconscious bias that they carry in them the moment they set foot on this planet Earth. 185 biases influence this part of the brain, and you have them too. They might be influenced by the culture you grew up in, the location you uh, grew up in, your parents, your mentors, your family members, your bosses, but you all have them. I am biased, and so are you. 11 million bits of information. Now, when I work with audiences or with clients, and I explain that concept of first impressions to them and how unconscious biases are either working for them or against them, they then ask me, so what is it? Tell me, is it good? What does my first impression say about me? And I tell them, well, I'm not really sure. I can't answer that question, but you can answer it yourself in two different ways. Let's start with the easy one. I want all of you to take out your phones, please, for a moment. Take out your phones. Turn on the camera. Turn it around for a selfie. But wait, before you take that selfie, we have one rule that you need to follow, and that is you are not allowed to pose. No posing, no Instagram filter posing. Just look into the camera 
and take a selfie. That's still posing, I see it. <laughs> Do not pose. Did you take the selfie without posing? Turn it around. Congratulations, that is your first impression. 80% of the day, we see you just like that, because 80% of the day, you do not pose. <laughs> and I can't tell you if that is a good first impression or not. You, only you can answer that. <laughs> well, how about you ask your neighbor? Show it to your neighbor. I don't know if that is the first impression you want to make and if confirmation bias, anchoring bias, and the other biases are working in your favor or not afterwards. So let's try the second way, which is a little bit more complex than just um, taking a selfie. I'm going to walk you through a three-step process, the first one being the most important one. Because I raise a question to you, what should it be? What is that one word that should pop up in everybody's mind when they think of you, when they experience you? What would you like clients to instantly feel when they interact with you? Only if you define what it should be, I can tell you if that is actually how we experience you. So what is the number one word that should pop up in everybody's mind when they think of you? No matter if it's your client, no matter if it's your boss, no matter if it's a team member, your neighbor, somebody in the community. Grab a piece of paper and write it down. What is the number one word that should pop up in everybody's mind? I have good news and bad news for you. Let's start with the bad news. Most of you just lied. <laughs> and I know it, because I bet you chose a high prestigious word like, I want to be perceived as trustworthy, as professional, as reliable, as kind. Uh-oh. You pick the five-star descriptor because it makes you feel good about yourself. If that just would be the way you would be perceived, because society taught us over the years that it would be great if you are perceived that way. But I ask you a different question. I ask you, what is the number one word you would like to imprint? And nobody else in this room, just you. And those words are often not as cozy and warm as the one that you just wrote down. Because when I coach clients, for example, until I have them down to that moment of truth, they tell me words like, actually, I want to be perceived as powerful, as influential, as wealthy. Those words are not as warm and cozy as the one you just chose. So last chance, you may want to change it now. Now, wouldn't it be interesting to know if this is actually what your clients expect from you? Is that the first impression they want to have of you when they interact with you? And I have the answer to this question. What do customers expect when they interact with you? How would they like you to make them feel in those first micro moments instantly? Over the past years, I did some research and I asked about 19,000 people Give me your number one word if you think of the picture-perfect teacher, the picture-perfect police officer, the picture-perfect doctor, the picture-perfect real estate agent. And 3,267 people gave me their word, their expectation of what they or how they want to feel when they interact with you. And you might be surprised. During that research, I found that the number one word is